This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama horror film called The Other Lamb. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A woman dressed in a white gown calmly sinks into the dark and still water. In a secluded community, Salat and her sister Tamar watch the waterfalls when Salah surprises Tamar. The girls leave while laughing and make their way through mountain terrain to a cluster of wooden cabins they call home. There, the other women known as the sisters and wives are doing chores while singing peacefully. As the women manage their food and supply, they all worship the group's lone male leader, the shepherd. During dinner, the daughters wearing blue dresses are lined on one side of the table and the wives, wearing red, are seated in front of the daughters. When the shepherd is done eating, he chooses one of the wives to receive his grace. Every night, the daughters sleep separately from their mothers and pray to the shepherd as their god. The following morning, the shepherd presides over his teachings among the women. He reminds them of their fate as his wives and how he sacrificed himself for them by providing everything they needed. Now wearing white dresses, the women admire him as he speaks but Salah seems to be drawn by her own thoughts. The shepherd then soaks his fingers into the goat's blood and marks the women's faces as they continue to praise him. Some women are crying in joy as they feel grateful for shepherd's blessings. A little while later, Salah and Tamar are left alone in the woods. Salah perceives the shepherd from a distance and asks Tamar to head into their cabin, leaving Salah alone with him. As shepherd and Salah walk together, the shepherd mentions her not listening to his sermon, which Salah becomes defensive of. She then smiles, realizing that he's only teasing her. The shepherd compliments her beauty as he twists his fingers into her loose hair. Salah then asks him to tell her a story of her mother, but the shepherd refuses. Instead, he leans for a kiss, but stops himself. He tells her to let the wives rebraid her hair before leaving. While alone, Salah cherishes their moment, believing that she will soon be his wife. Back in the cabin, while Salah and Tabitha, one of her sisters, are doing their chores, Eloise, one of the wives, blissfully shares her experience with the shepherd last night. This makes Salah jealous as Eloise recently came to the group and is almost the same age as her, yet she is already a wife. Tabitha warns her for talking badly towards the wives, ensuing in a fight between them. Tabitha's mother comes in and settles the argument by ordering Salah to bring the leftovers into the hut, where the impure and sinned woman reside. Inside the hut lies an unconscious young woman, who fasts as she's impure due to having a period. Another woman, Sarah, walks out of the shadows, revealing her body covered in scars. Sarah is surprised by the handful of leftovers, but Salah reminds her to eat so Sarah can be pure again. Salah believes that the woman sent into the hut, away from them, must repent and be punished, just like her fellow unconscious sister, who's experiencing period cramps. According to the shepherd, what they're enduring is a punishment for Eve's sin, but Sarah warns Salah to be prepared when her time comes as she will no longer be special to him anymore. Salah is visibly disturbed by Sarah's comments about her and her mother. Outside, Salah kicks stones to release her frustration. Later that night, Adriel, the pregnant wife, puts her daughter Lily to sleep in the daughter's room. Lily insists on hearing a story, but Adriel reminds her that only the shepherd can tell stories. While everyone is sleeping, Salah appears to acquire an unhealthy obsession with the shepherd, as she observes him from the window. From the window in his cabin, the shepherd stares at Salah when suddenly Eloise appears. The two watch Salah intently while the shepherd sticks his fingers into Eloise's mouth. The following day, while some wives bathe the shepherd, the older wives bathe their daughters. The shepherd assigns Salah to help a sheep give birth. Despite the advice she receives on how to do it, Salah is still overwhelmed by the task. Amid the landscape, Salah is alone with the flock of sheep. While waiting for the pregnant sheep to give birth, Salah falls asleep. When she wakes up, she finds the dying sheep with its newborn lamb. Her thoughts are interrupted when she discovers that she's finally having her period. That evening, Salah hides in one of the cabins to check if the blood is still there that night. When she sees blood, she wipes herself with wool and screams in frustration. Back at their cabin, Salah tells Tamar that a wild dog got into one of the lambs, but in her mind, 
she sees a vision of herself stabbing the lamb. When the wives find out that the sheep died, they bring her to the church, and the shepherd forgives her. Still, Salah mourns for what happened, believing she's impure. One night, while everyone's sleeping, Salah overhears a police officer telling the shepherd that they must leave the woods or else he will be arrested. The next day, the shepherd announces that they must all travel in search of another Eden. He then falls on his back and the women run to his aid. Confused, Salah remains in her position. Then, the shepherd smiles and laughs with the women, who carry him on their shoulders. Everyone looks forward to their journey to a new home, yet Salah remains confused. Her thoughts only grow dimmer when the shepherd strokes her neck, a gesture he does when interested in someone. Later on, Shepherd finds Salah alone in the woods. Salah is saddened about leaving their home, but the shepherd encourages her to be strong for her younger sisters. Before leaving home, the women sing a chant as if saying goodbye to the land. The group walks while carrying their clothes and bringing their flock of sheep. They travel by foot, stopping now and then to rest and eat. When they come upon abandoned houses along the way, Salah asks the shepherd why they can't just live in one of them, but the shepherd responds that broken people created the place. They take another break, and behind the bonfire in front of Salah is a tent where the shepherd advances himself on Eloise once again. That night, Salah walks back to the abandoned house and stares at a landscape painting in it. When she turns her back, she is surprised to see Eloise smirking at her. Yet, her smile disappears when she reveals her bruised neck. The following day, Tabitha screams as Salah can no longer hide the bloodstains. Tabitha calls her impure. With that, Salah walks last in line along with Sarah, whom she discriminated against days before. Meanwhile, the strong wind keeps them on hold, and they rest again in a shady area. The wives look wistful at the shepherd, who holds two daughters in his arms. They reminisce about the time when they had complete access to shepherd's grace. A younger wife quickly responds that he's no longer interested in them because they're old, to which the younger woman receives a firm slap. At the same time, Salah takes the opportunity to question Sarah about her mom. Sarah reveals that her mother didn't die after childbirth, but rather from an infection. But the shepherd refused to seek medical assistance, leading to her death. She and Salah's mother joined the cult together and vied for shepherd's attention, but soon Salah's mother died. During the challenging trek, Salah begins to question shepherd's judgment. When she sees a car driving down the road, she imagines herself inside, dressed as a typical teenager. Salah sees herself riding in it while Sarah and her mom are in the front seat. She perceives strange visions as manifestations of what she thinks. That night, Salah slowly loves being with Sarah as she can share her sentiments towards the shepherd. Salah, too, has reservations about him, but she has been taught to obey. Sarah tells her a moment she had before. She used to sneak out in the middle of the night and stand naked by the waterfall, which made her feel liberated. When Salah wonders why Sarah didn't just leave, she says it's because she doesn't know what's out there anymore and that she has nowhere to go. That night, noticing the closeness between Salah and Sarah, the shepherd uses Sarah's weakness of longing for him and spends the evening with her while everyone sleeps. The following day, Salah is allowed to walk with the rest again. The shepherd apologizes for leaving her with Sarah, who he deems is broken. During this, Adriel experiences contractions due to the strenuous hike. The daughters clutch to each other in fear as they listen to Adriel's screams of agony. The wives guide her during her labor, but still, she dies in childbirth. During the funeral, the shepherd tears Lily from her deceased mother. Sarah blames the shepherd for her death and even addresses him by his given name, Michael. The shepherd coldly presides over the funeral and burns her body while the others sing a farewell song for her. Enraged, Salah has another vision of her furious self in front of the burning corpse of Adriel. The next day, Salah notices Sarah not following them. Sarah informs Salah that she is leaving with the baby. The shepherd had told them that the baby had to be left behind since it has been born incorrectly. The baby is a boy and the shepherd wanted to leave him since a flock can only have one ram. 
Sarah reminds Salah to keep being strong and helps her sisters before leaving with the baby. As they walk further, Tamar becomes impatient and questions Shepard if they are already near their supposed home. The Shepard doesn't answer, but Tamar feels they're heading in the wrong direction, which enrages the Shepard and hits Tamar. After hitting her head multiple times, he drags her and asks Tamar to lead their way instead. The woman can't do anything about it as they're afraid to get hit as well. Salah watches the scene with a furious gaze as the Shepard denounces Tamar. A little while later, the Shepherd declares a valley with a beautiful lake to be their new Eden. The voyage has shaken the sisters' faith, but the Shepherd baptizes everyone, which appears to be an act of cleansing and demonstrating his control over them. The first young woman tells them that she feels different again, but when it's Salah's turn, he keeps her underwater longer than others. While underwater, Salah envisions herself drowning in a crimson water while dressed in flowing white garments with the other woman. She is reminded of all her anger before the shepherd pulls her up again. That evening, the shepherd summons Salah to his tent, but Tamar tells her not to go. They've all grown to loathe the shepherd for abandoning his pregnant wife, but Salah continues to attend because she knows she must obey. Inside the tent, the shepherd commands her to unbraid herself and compliments her beauty for looking like her mother. He takes control of her and puts two fingers in her mouth so she can't scream. When he's done, Salah remains still, gazing up and trying to figure out what she's doing here. Her strange visions start to show again as her anger flares. She daydreams about the sisters murdering the shepherd by devouring him into pieces. That night, Salah disobeys his rules by telling a story that she learned from Sarah as if she's trying to awaken their mind that they deserve so much better. Salah tells them the story of a naked woman in front of the waterfalls, which shows her where to go and be free. The daughters awaken the following day and discover that the wives have gone missing. They arrive at the lake and find the shepherd kneeling among the wives' robes. The shepherd concocts a fable about how the river carried them away and how they will now live eternally. While the children lament the loss of their mothers, the shepherd tells the daughters that they have to replace the role of the wives. He asks Salah first to marry him and promises her all of his grace. However, the angered Salah refuses his grace and says he is not their shepherd. The shepherd is astounded as he gets rejected by his favorite daughter, so he slaps Salah. As Salah imagines what the shepherd has done to the wives, she hits back harder. Later, the cops arrive at the location where the old wives' remains had washed away. They follow the path and discover paintings of shepherds and evidence that people formerly lived there. Then, they encounter the shepherd, who is hanged to a tree and appears to be dead. He wears ram's horns on his head, implying that he's a demon disguised as a shepherd. On the other hand, the daughters stand in front of a waterfall, just like in Sarah's story. Salah, who stands before them, is holding a bleeding lamb in her arms. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.